going to be here yet. You want to ring the bell? Yeah. I'm going to hold those and then go ring the bell. Go ring the bell. Go ring the bell.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Holy Trinity this morning. Uh, and welcome to those at home as well, anyone who's watching via uh, the internet. We're especially uh, happy to welcome our Bishop Provisional, the Right Reverend Prince Singh this morning. Uh, so let's, uh, as we go through this service and, uh, and afterwards, let's make him feel very, very welcome. Because he surely is welcome here. Our opening hymn is hymn number 343. It's printed in the bulletins. Shepherds of souls, refresh and bless. are his. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Please be seated for the reading of the first lesson. 
A reading from Acts. Those who have been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came over everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 23, read responsibly by whole verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul, and guides me along right pathways for his namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness, Lord, and worship shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the first letter of Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who justice, judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is hymn number 664, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need.
according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come be came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our I'm not really hearing the mic like this one is. No. Uh, Am I okay to keep? Oh, yeah, you okay. Okay. Brilliant. This is a good spot for folks who are online. Is anybody <laughs> online? Four of them. Hi, four of you. Good to see you. Good morning. My name is Prince Singh and I have the privilege of serving as the Bishop Provisional for Western and Eastern Michigan. I live, I've got to get my map out. I live somewhere there, close to Big Rapids in a little commu community called Canadian Lakes. It's about an hour and a half-ish from here. And I'm so delighted to be here with all of you I'm grateful for Susan. Susan, thank you for stepping in and playing. Yeah. That's very kind of you. And Everett, and I see Brian Coleman was sitting in the pews as well. I've heard so much about you. And I don't know what you know about me, but I used to be the Bishop of uh, Rochester, New York for about 14 years. So I'm familiar with this weather. <laughs> um, and I uh, have two sons. One of them is a sound engineer in Nashville, Tennessee, and the other is a senior in college. He will graduate this year, uh, this May, in a few weeks. Uh, he's training to be an actor. So we'll be poor. <laughs> they both are passionate about their work. Um, just in case you're wondering if this is a midlife crisis, um, I don't think it is. I'm, I'm still doing this every year because my hair is still growing. And I've started uh, donating it to Wigs for Kids. It's one of the organizations that uses hair to create wigs for children who lose their hair because of cancer treatment. So that's what's going on. <laughs> um, I want to see if we can just pay a little bit of attention to one of the I think important themes of Holy Scripture, and especially the Gospels, where Jesus tries to give us a sense of what it means to be leaders. And in fact, every one of us who's called to be a disciple of Christ, who is following Christ, is called to be a leader. And by the way, when I was talking to Susan and Everett, 
They told me about Carter. Carter, I've heard about you. <laughs> Apparently you carry the cross with great panache. I am so looking forward to meeting you because that is the leader. Usually when you carry the cross, you're the first one to go in, right? And so I want to talk a little bit about leadership in the sense of what it means to be a leader who follows Jesus, right? And so there are some beautiful passages that we've been given today to consider. And I think each of them has at least one clue for me in terms of what it means to be a leader who follows Jesus. And as I was praying about this morning, I was reminded of something very significant in terms of understanding leadership. And that is in your name, Holy Trinity, right? We believe in a triune God. How many gods do we have? One. One. Good answer. Wow, I'm very impressed. One God. But we know God as a multiplicity within that unit. Right? When I was a young person and in India, I grew up in South India, in the church that I was attending, one of the things that my pastor, my priest did was to conduct a confirmation class for mostly young people who had Down syndrome. It was a beautiful movement called Faith and Light that I was part of. And this particular exercise was really significant for me in many ways. It has been very formative for me. In the course of the classes that we did, one of the exercises I remember was when he said, you know, gave us piece, uh, sheets of paper and said, draw something that depicts the Trinity. So all of us got very creative. My neighbor was Susan Mathai. She was about 21-ish and with Downs. And Susan had the most interesting depiction of the Trinity that I will never forget. She had basically one squiggly line. And when it came time to show and tell, she said, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Susan. <laughs> I've been to seminary. I've never heard a better explanation of the Trinity. Susan had placed herself in the communion of the Trinity. And I think that is the dream of God, that we would all commune and be a part of this unity that we know as the Trinity. It is the Holy Trinity because there is no conflict within. Why? Because it is held together in love. At the core of leadership, as a follower of Jesus, is a call for us to love. To love and love and love again. And so within this aspect of leadership, I want to raise up a few characteristics that stand out for me. The first one is, is really from our, our reading where in Peter, in 2 Peter, he talks about suffering. Suffering not because we messed up. We all do that, right? Suffering because we made a mistake and, and that sort of thing. But suffering when you have not made a mistake. I'd like to call it righteous suffering. When you didn't do anything wrong and yet you have a bad deal. And life is not fair, right? That sometimes things don't work out. 
that you're not really applauded for the right thing. But you actually bear a cross because you did something good. That is real. And when you feel alone, because usually you feel alone when that happens, right? When something went wrong, and when something continues to go wrong, even though you are trying your best to live a good life, to be a righteous person, that kind of suffering is what Peter is talking about. And when it does happen, that you hold on to your faith, that you do not become bitter. I took a lot of my lessons in life from my mother. She was a single mother who became a social worker and did a whole lot of things in her life that were pretty exemplary. One of the most significant things that I learned from her was her deep capacity to while she was going through things that were not fair, etc., she kept her faith. She did not flinch. She knew that God would never leave her. So I don't know where you are on your journey, but if you are feeling alone, but if you are feeling like life is not fair, that you are bearing a cross that is pretty ominous, know this, not everybody has that stewardship. And if you do, I hope you will carry your cross with dignity, gallantly, knowing that God walks with you. If you look at the life of Jesus, there were times when he, he really suffered. If you read the Gospels again and again, there were times people were really mean to him. Have you noticed? Mm -hmm. There was a time they were actually willing to throw him off the cliff because he said some things that irritated people. Right? Suffering is not by itself something that we should run away from, but that we can be stewards and leaders who can bear the cross and yet not lose their faith. The one thing that Jesus does promise us is that God is with us. God does not promise that everything will be fine, that everything will be rosy. God does promise God's presence. About two years ago, almost two years ago, I was <coughs> in Rochester and I was, it was a, a pretty nice day and I had just come back home. I was on a Zoom call, it's about 12-ish in the afternoon. I heard some crackling noise. I paused my Zoom meeting and ran to see what was going on. I opened the door out, it was completely on fire. And the, my car had self-exploded or something happened. And it took me just a second to realize this is, this is not good. So I ran, picked up my phone, called 911, ran outside. By the time the neighbors came, there were seven fire engines and the house was destroyed. If that had happened at 12 o'clock at night, I would have been right on top of that fire. I am standing here as a witness before you, having come through a fire. It's just a small smidget of an example. Yeah, I lost everything, but I'm still alive, still got my faith. I don't know what your fire is. Hold on, hold on because God is with you and things will get better. That's the
the only assurance we have. At the end of the day, as long as God is walking with us, in and through our suffering, we can be witnesses to the fact that God walks with us. And that's a witness to leadership. Are you following what I'm saying? As long as we can be faithful. The second example that I want to lift up to you is from Acts of the Apostles, where the disciples, the early disciples, were people who actually shared when anybody had a need. It was a beautiful church. It was a church that came out of the crucible of suffering. They knew fear. They knew how it felt to be marginalized. And yet they learned through that experience of suffering that when I suffer, somebody else can feel it. Somebody else can be present. Somebody else can resonate with love. And so they learn to be unselfish. Imagine that. Imagine a world where we can all learn to be unselfish in our love. I, I think I'm preaching to the choir because you know a thing or two about being unselfish. I've heard about your baby closet. I've heard about your, you know, clarity about sharing your way of leading, for instance. That is unselfish. Learning to be unselfish is really probably the most significant lesson that we can learn from Jesus. Because he was unselfish. And he teaches us to love unselfishly. So my beloved, as our forebears who were Christians, striving to follow Jesus, Learn to be unselfish. We too can be unselfish. Maybe slowly, but surely. Maybe step by step by step by step, we can. And as long as we are in communion with the Trinity, like Susan reminded us, we may be able to move in that direction. Because that's the model that we get from our Holy Trinity. But finally, I want to also lift up another aspect of leadership, and that is character. We are told in this beautiful passage from Luke about how Jesus is considered a good shepherd. Good shepherd. Shepherd, by the way, is another way of saying leader. Because shepherds lead. Right? That's one of the reasons I carry a crozier or, or a staff. It's just to remind me and us that we are not without leadership. Not that the bishop is the one who leads, but it's a model of leadership. Do you see what I'm saying? You are leaders, so I'm preaching to the choir, right? I know a little bit about what it means for a congregation that is figuring things out, even without a rector, right? About how to lead. Because that means you are people who can dig deep and answer the question, how can we take care of this body? And that's why character is important. Character means there's integrity. Character means that we are able to offer the best we can. As some wise person has said, has said, character is what you do when no one is looking. It's not for the cameras. It's a thing of the heart. It's a thing about integrity. And that's what Jesus is. Jesus, the good shepherd, 
tells us that he is not like a hired hand who comes in to steal or to exploit, but comes to actually make things better, more beautiful, more safe, more fruitful. That's what character does. And when you look at leaders out there in the world, if that benchmark is not met, there's a problem. Because without character, we will sell our souls. Right? Whether it's young children or adults, it's the same thing. We are called, in that sense of the word, to follow the Good Shepherd because that's an example of character. And character does not let us down. It may have calls for us to do some tough things, but it comes from a place of integrity. That's why I think this gospel or the gospel community called the church is still around. There are many parts of the world where a Sunday morning like this is unimaginable. Do you know why? Because it's dangerous to worship God. It's dangerous to follow Jesus. I'm talking about the country that I grew up, for instance, where there are forces that come and intimidate Christians who just gather to worship. It's very common to read about churches being set on fire, all because some of the forces within that context don't want people to follow this Jesus. Persecution is very real in many parts of the world. But the thing that really stands out to me every time I hear a story like that is that people of faith who follow this Jesus hold on to their integrity, hold on to their faith. I've seen it time and time again. And these are not big, you know, heroes that we describe. These are ordinary people with deep and in deep integrity and an extraordinary faith. So my friends, when we consider character and when we consider leadership, let us keep in mind that the model that Jesus sets for us is that we guard our souls. And only you can do that by yourself within the privacy of your heart to meditate on scripture, to pray with that deep sense of wanting to be like God. And as I started this sermon, Susan reminds me, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Susan. And you can put your name there and be in that holy trinity so that you will live with that clarity every day of your life. And may it be that because we are leaders who follow this Jesus, that we will draw many to this Jesus because he does make a big difference in our world. Amen. Amen. stand as you're able. We're going to renew our baptismal
covenant. And so in order to do that, we will move forward with the blessing of the water. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water. We pray you by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises, pro promises and vows of holy baptism by which we renounce what we, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in God's holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Will you continue the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to get splashed? Oh, here, I'll just take that part. So remember that you are baptized and that God has given you everything that you need to be leaders who follow this Jesus. Remember your baptism and may God who has given you everything you need to follow him as God's children.
Uh, could we have those that are going to be uh, here for the recognition of ministries come up? Congregation may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, we are all baptized by the one Spirit into one body and given gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. Bishop saying, Susan Lancoyle and John Carter are here. Uh, they have been called to ministry of a worship leader in this congregation. James Payne, I'm afraid, was not feeling well this morning, so he was not able to be here. And then Mary Ortiz and Mary War have been called to be co-chairs of the Baby Pantry, and that ministry offered to the Manistee community uh, by this congregation. Praise, Praise be to God, who has called you to this service. service. Let us pray. Look with favor upon those whom you have called, O God, and grant that they may be so filled with your Holy Spirit that they may minister in their chosen tasks with joy and steadfast devotion through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Susan, John, in the name of God, we recognize you as worship leaders in this congregation. May God bless you and enable you and Jeff as you continue to lead. In the name of God, we recognize you, Mary and Mary, as co-chairs of the baby pantry offered by this parish to the Manistee community. Amen. May God bless you. of the people, form three. <clears throat> holy God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That every one may be one. one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Prince, our own bishop, for our partner bishops, Bonnie, Rayford, Craig, and Moises, and for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for all bishops and other ministers. We pray also for those in our diocese preparing for the sacred order of priests, including Joe, Barrett, Alex, Matt, and Anne Marie. We pray also for those in our diocese preparing for the sacred order of deacons, including Abraham, John, Stephanie, Don, Jennifer, Justin, Jessica, Julianne, Beckett, Rachel, John, Linda, Kathy, Belle, Joy, Mary, Catherine, and Teresa. We remember with gratitude the retired clergy of the diocese. That they, they may be faithful ministers of your, your word and sacraments. sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for Joe, our president, Gretchen, our governor, our Congress and Senate legislatures, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our Lord, 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 We pray for the healing 
Al Kathleen Linton, Wes, Hope, Marty, Eileen, Tom, Nathan, Candy, Don, Jim, Jen, Jaden, Mace, Joe, Kathy, Doris, Pete, Suzanne, Steve, David, Sherry, and Janet. And those you would add at this time. Barbara. Joe. Carolyn. And for those of those who have asked for our prayers of healing, have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially for Sally Chapman, Dale Bush, Todd Culver, and those you would add at this time. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the life of the virtues come upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. In our parish cycle of prayers, we pray for B. Capper, John and Cindy Carter, and the families we serve at the baby pantry. We lift up our elected leaders of the parish, our vestry members and officers, Susan, Corey, Jim, Carol, John, Kim, and Susan. We also pray for the people, mission, and ministry of our local churches. We also pray for the mission and ministry of St. Paul's, Gladwin, Jerry Todd, Senior Warden, Holy Trinity, Manistee, Susan Lundfoil, Senior Warden. We pray for all those having birthdays or anniversaries this week, especially Mary War and Neil and Carolyn Plant. You may now offer your petitions and thanksgivings, either with your lips or in your hearts. Pray for those who travel today. And they reach their destination safely and return home safely. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Lord Jesus Christ, you have said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Do we have any announcements? I would just, uh, on behalf of the Baby Pantry chairpersons, would like to recognize those Baby Pantry people who work so hard. Allison Sierra, Leslie Day, Jay and Portwright, Jane Corum, Jamie Payne, Bob Brook, Amy Coyle, and I'm sorry if I've forgotten anyone. We couldn't do this without your help. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give them a hand. You know, during the prayers of people, I, I, I heard this little bird come in through the, the door there that, that's open and, and kind of fly back and forth here, announcing that there were birthdays happening, but, but not giving any names. So um, I think we need to sing, at least sing happy birthday uh, to everyone. And, and instead of putting names in, just put the words, God bless you in there. So let's begin. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And welcome back to, to you and Carolyn. We're happy that you're back and safe and sound. And that's good. Um, do we have any other, any other announcements? Okay. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to pray 
for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. into righteousness, out of death, into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim, therefore according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in Christ's care and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Christ bread of heaven. Sending body of Christ bread. John body of Christ bread. The body of Christ Thank you. 
Christ's bread of heaven. Body of Christ's bread of heaven. Body of Christ's bread of heaven. In solidarity with those who are worshiping from home, let us say the spiritual communion prayer. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day. In remembering particularly my own church and those worshiping there, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, that since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart 
my soul and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. And now let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. On the exceptional hymn, hymn number 645, The King of Love, My Shepherd is.